Joel Casamayor thrives on movement. He needs to get plenty of it against Diego Corrales. And one of the ways is to stay off the ropes. He must keep this fight in the center of the ring. He's a terrific counterpuncher. He'll need to be against Corrales. We saw this against Asselino Freitas. Freitas' right hand goes wide. And Casamayor gets ready and then counterpunches effectively. This is exactly what he needs to do against a charging Diego Corrales. Against the movement at Casamayor, cutting off the ring is important for Corrales. And one way to do that is use the left hook to keep him right in front of him. And the body attack is an important staple of what Diego plans to do. He must hit the body early and often. He's got tremendous power to the body. He was able to knock Mike Davis down with a body shot. We don't expect this against Casamayor, but we do expect this kind of body attack to slow Joel down going into the later rounds. All right, Al, it's old-time boxing, boxing the way it's supposed to be. Two former champs who want to get back to fighting for a world title, taking on the toughest opponent. And here is the man who held the IBF belt, the extremely confident Diego Corrales, who promises to have a surprise in store, but wouldn't exactly tip us off. Here he comes, one of boxing's rising stars prior to the personal problems, had three dominating performances, his three title defenses against respected contenders, including Southpaw Derek Gaynor and Angel Manfredi, but then uh, embarrassed by uh, Mayweather in a highly anticipated Serpa fight, dropped five times in a 10th round TKO. That is the last time he fought someone on Casamayor's skill level. Ali's had only 12 rounds since the layoff. Is this a case of too much too soon for Corrales, the guy who's trying to get back to the way he was prior to the Mayweather fight? Well, you know, I think it could be more of a timing issue, Steve, and, you know, that could be important for him with only those 12 rounds in the four fights. Will he be sharp enough early in this fight? He is a very quick starter, needs to be a quick starter, and Casamayor is a notoriously slow starter, so early in his fight he can't afford to be rusty. Coming in with the camouflage outfit, 9-0 with eight knockouts versus Southpaws, including his last fight. The prevailing opinion, he'll go for the knockout, knowing a decision may be difficult to get. Casmayor has fought several hard punchers in the past without going down, unless, of course, you count Asselino Freitas, which many people feel was a questionable Stop him when he's knockdown. taking down that guy, Tony. So Diego Corrales looking very confident, very determined. Prodigious knockout power in both hands. His biggest moment since that Mayweather fight, so he's thinking right now about how important this match is. He's got the big left hook and a terrific right, and he's going to try to use it a lot against this man, the former WBA champion and 1992 Olympic gold medalist, Joel Casamayor. The Southpaw story well documented, defecting to the United States from Cuba before the 96 games. Lost his title after four defenses in a bitterly disputed foul-filled two-point decision to Freitas. Ready to make his way in. Recently completely altered his lifestyle, perhaps overindulging in his newfound freedom following his restricted communist existence. Now a regular churchgoer, baptized before 2,000 onlookers about three weeks ago. Making a very, very deliberate entrance. perhaps to some degree of issue. It's a long walk. The dressing rooms are way in the back. 
But knowing Corrales' explosive power, Al, is this a night that we will see what Casamayor is really made of? Well, you know, this 32-year-old knows that this bout will determine if he keeps his place in boxing center stage. He, I think, had the best training camp he has had in many, many years. I don't think that's a wide tale. I think that's true, and I think Casamayor is ready tonight. The question is, has he lost any of his quickness? He got tagged a lot in a too-close-for-comfort win over Nate Campbell, his last fight. Can he avoid Corrales' sledgehammer punches? Set to size him up as we check out the tail of the tape. Corrales, who turned 26 last month, is six years younger than Casamayor, now 32. Corrales tall for this weight class, three and a half inch edge in height, but only a slight reach advantage at the weigh-in uh, yesterday. Casamayor right on Corrales under. Notable rules for this eliminator. No standing eight, no three knockdown. A fighter can't be saved by the belt any round. Accidental headbutt before the end of the fourth, but no decision after the end of four, the scorecard. So here at the Mandalay Bay, getting set for Joel Casamayor versus Diego Corrales, scheduled for 12 rounds. Let's get the introductions from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, once again from the beautiful Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino here in Las Vegas, Nevada, we continue our action with a very special attraction brought to you by Goosen Tudor Promotions. In association with the Mandalay Bay, the undisputed king of beers, Budweiser, and Showtime. This bout coming away also brought to you in conjunction with Cedric Kushner Promotions and Gary Shaw Productions. It is sanctioned by the IBF, the President Marion Mohammed Supervisor Dr. Jack Battaglia. The IBA President and Supervisor is Dean Chance and the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Judging this bout from ringside, from Reno, Nevada, Bert Clements, from Las Vegas, Nevada, Chuck Jampa, also from Las Vegas, we have Glenn Trowbridge, and our third man in the ring, our referee in charge of the action, is Tony Weeks. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled for the IBA World Championship and the IBF Junior Lightweight World Championship Elimination. Introducing to you first on my right, he is fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with red and blue trim, representing Team Freedom and Miami, Florida, by way of Guantanamo, Cuba. He weighed in at the junior lightweight limit of 130 pounds, even a gold medalist in the 1992 Olympics. His professional record stands at 29 wins, one defeat, 18 wins coming by way of knockout. He is ranked number three in the world by the IBF. Here is the former WBA super featherweight champion of the world, introducing Joel El Cepillo. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the blue corner in this 12-round attraction, wearing camouflage trunks, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of Sacramento, California. He weighed in at a trim and ready 128 and one half pounds. His record stands at 37 wins, only one defeat with 31 big wins coming by way of knockout. Currently ranked number four in the world by the IBF. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former IBF junior lightweight champion of the world, introducing Diego Chico. again, a referee in charge, Tony Weeks, now to give instructions, 12 rounds of action scheduled. Let's go. Okay, gentlemen, you already received your instructions. I received your instructions. Be careful with your heads. Cuidado con sus cabezas. Okay, if it goes right here, it's okay. In the it's going to be low. Mira, aquí está bien, aquí no. Goes right here, it's okay, and his gonna be low. Aquí está bien, aquí no. Keep everything above the waist, listen to the paraliva. 
I want a good, clean fight. De que luna play Olympia. Obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourselves at all times. Escúchame, cuídate. Listo? Listo? Let's go. Vámonos. The Im impressive bilingual instructions by Tony Weeks. Classic boxer versus puncher, slick versus strong. Casamayor, most vulnerable, early, slow starter. We saw that against Freitas, against uh, Roberto Garcia. Often loops his lefts the first few rounds, possibly making him susceptible to Corrales' straight rights down the middle. Corrales, a tall, rangy, busy, two-fisted puncher with crushing power. Very tough to hit. But how solid is the chin? That's one question mark after the five knockdowns against Floyd Mayweather. But Corrales salivates at the notion of a slugfest. It's not likely for Casamayor to come in and trade with Corrales. That could be a major mistake. You know, I don't know if I've ever done this in my, all my years of boxing broadcasting, but I'm going to tell you something. Joel Casamayor has sculpted his body in such a way that he looks like he's in better shape. I always, I seldom say that because it can be so deceiving. This guy had a training camp in which he put himself through the test along with trainer Joe Goosen. We're seeing the, the, you know, what he built. Now that doesn't mean he's going to win this fight. He's just going to stand with a big left hook. Step back, but it, step back. it will tell you that he came to win. He's well prepared, but a, a great physical appearance, as you know, Al, doesn't always translate into a victory. Casamayor, a slashing in and out nuisance southpaw, a pinpoint counterpuncher, who, as Al pointed out, looks to be in fantastic shape. One of the best fighters to come out of Cuba. Much more subdued than uh, the upbeat Corrales in our meeting with them the other day. Casamayor knows that the legs are so pivotal here. Some, including Kenny Adams, Corrales' trainer, feel that Casamayor may have gotten a little old in his last fight against Nate Campbell. In fantasy, he did take that fight on very short notice. Two and a half weeks to train for the Campbell fight. Uh, they took it because that's the climate of boxing. You have to take fights when they're offered to you. It's part of the part of the reason for this fight you know in the old days you might not have taken this fight especially for the money they're making while it's substantial it's not what would have been 10 5 6 7 8 9 10 years ago but you do it because you need to fight and you need to be effective beautiful accurate countering left took upstairs by Casamayor in that extreme Casamayor's idea is to be cautiously aggressive in the first few rounds and try to take Corrales deep, but that's so true what you said before that that flurry and exchange It's just the current economics of boxing As good as Corrales's power is he's got to be careful not to swing for the fences So far Corrales not cutting the ring off as effectively as he might on Casamayor, but of course we have a ways to go here Beautiful jab by Casamayor. I think Casamayor looked very good here in the in the first round. And Corrales, again, he has to be careful not to go for the home run with every punch. He's got to wear Casamayor down with body work using both hands. He's got to neutralize that speed and footwork and defense and, you know, cut off the ring, stay busy, use the jab, and Casamayor out of his rhythm. Okay. Very good, very good. You're seeing everything. That's what I love. Uh -huh. right. Keep using your things. Keep using your smarts. Keep, keep surprising them. Keep surprising. You have to let them roll, man. Give me a towel, please. You got to get Gordon, man. Take a little wrench here. Don't worry. Here you go. Utilize your jab. Use your stick more, okay? Okay. This guy's trying to hold all day long we on the inside. We will see a clash of heads that created that cut. What a shame, and it's in a bad spot. They came to head, their heads came together. It didn't look intentional. It looked like they were both just on the inside, and that created that cut, and we would assume that it was called an accidental clash of heads by Tony Weeks. Um, and if so, it was. yeah, if so, of course, it could impact this fight. We could be looking at a technical draw if it keeps bleeding over the next round or so like this. It didn't look that critical watching it when it happened, but you can certainly see 
It's overly nine. Okay, okay. No, no. Keep it clear. And it could become a factor. Ruben Gomez quickly has to go to work. The cut man in Diego Corrales' corner. Watch out for those roughhouse tactics by Cosmeo. We saw it in the second half of his fight with Asolino uh, Freitas. When he got very frustrated against Freitas. Stop, no, no, stop, stop, stop. Round two, it's scheduled for 12, a 130-pound elimination bout. Casamayor. Keep him up. In the white. Keep him up. Morales in the camouflage. Stop, stop. Out. And, of course, that cut uh, bothers him to Diego Corrales. This fight would have to go past four rounds for them to go to the scorecards. Anything prior to that, if it was stopped because of the cut, it would be a technical draw or no decision. Casmayor has to hit uh, Chico while he's coming in. That's got to be part of his strategy. He's got to stuff that jab and keep him off balance. Straight left by Casamayor. Chico Morales is doing what he sometimes does in life, and that is fighting a very mechanical, slow-paced fight in which he is not getting his punches off. And you see the left hook there. Corrales is supposed to be stepping to his left and using that left hook as a means of stopping Casamayor from moving that way. He's not doing it. He's just following him around the ring. And against a boxer like Casamayor, that will not get it done. Casamayor looking extremely sharp. A lot of side-to-side -side movement, trying to confuse the hard-punching Corrales. Corrales looks like he's just trying to measure Casamayor out for one good punch. See, there he used the hook, Corrales, to kind of try and keep him there, but then Casamayor still got to the right. Oh, stop, stop. Boy, that head of Casamayor is coming dangerously close to the eye again. Blood from above the left eye of Corrales from an accidental headbutt in the first round. His heads came together in clash. You can see the blood there. Well, we know that movement and boxing ability gives Chico Corrales some trouble. Clearly, Floyd Mayweather, who is a master boxer, was able to do it. And Casamayor, so far, is doing it. And the blood just making life a little more difficult now for Corrales. But a guy who has been through it all as a youth involved in street gangs in, in Sacramento, once shot at by the police, which he described as a life-changing experience. So anytime a cop shoots five or six rounds at you during a chase, that will wake you up. <laughs> Checking himself out, you okay, notice, baby. on the big screen. All right, there you go. What you got to think about is this. Relax and good, but you're not letting your hands go. You're looking for one little shot for him. You got to use that stick, okay? You got to use the jab and use the stick right, while you utilize the jab, turn the hook off of the jab and drop the right hand. The right hand is right there, but you're waiting too long to get there, okay? okay. Quit resetting. Don't reset. Once again, utilize the jab effectively and drop the right In hand. Round off. One, the hook. This is the clash of heads that created the cut they're working on now. Wow, just perfect. And you know, from this angle, you can almost make the case Joel Casamayor kind of knew that his head was headed to the left. We'll take a look. Not suggesting he's absolutely deliberate, but he moved that head pretty dramatically. So, still called an accidental clash of heads, of no, course. Out. And uh, the cut it created is creating some issues for Diego Corrales. It is round three, scheduled for 12. A high-stakes, high-risk affair. A win can open a lot of doors. A, the loser may go back to what might be called boxing hell. Well, it is boxing hell when you have to fight your way back. There's Gomez. A left hook sends Corrales to the canvas. Four, five, six, seven. Hey, come to me. Come to me. Come to me. You okay? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see how Corrales performs on another straight oh, left oh, hand. Oh, oh, oh. Time, time. Come here. Get over here. Come here. Come here. One point over here. One point over here. Tony Wiggs over here. Dumping a point. Yeah. Look at 
Hernandez has overtaken Casamayor okay. for the, for the headbutt. And that was the okay. second and third time Casamayor has done it. Now, once again, in a big fight, a, a controversial point reduction of Casamayor. Will that take him out of his game as the freightest knockdown that he was disputing did? We'll see. Now, this should play right into Corrales' hands if Casamayor continues to press him because he's the puncher. We'll see. Corrales down for the sixth time, of course, the previous five against the other slipster, Floyd Mayweather. A left hand by Casamayor putting him down. And a, the, the advantage of the knockdown negated by the point deducted by Tony Weeks. So the Casamayor people sure beside themselves at this juncture. And technically speaking, since Casamayor is a left-hander, a southpaw, I guess you would term that a left hand as opposed to a left hook that floored uh, Corrales. Yeah, it was a, a looping left. Corrales is not putting himself in a position where he can throw that left hook. Part of what Kenny Adams was talking about. And he, he's looking for only one punch. Meantime, a welt developing on the right temple of Casamayor. Perhaps also the result of heads colliding, which is his doing. You know, every time Corrales does hit Casamayor, you can feel it making some impact. It's just that he can't do it enough. He's a powerful man, Corrales. When he punches you and hits you flush, body or head, and there's a hook by Corrales after a left hand of Casamayor. So this fight is really heating up. We approach 30 seconds left in a furious oh, third stop, 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 round. Stop, stop, stop. See, Joel Casamayor drop Diego Corrales 26 seconds into the round. And just 20 seconds later, Tony Weeks deducted a point from Casamayor. Stop, 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 stop. So very interesting round to score. the neck of Corrales by Casamayor. Oh, what an interesting round that was. All right, there you go. Defining yourself. Like I said before, you're waiting. Don't don't play and try to play games with him. Now, we got to move the opposite way. Move away from the left hand now, okay? In other words, I want you to move back to the left over here, okay? But at the same time, you got to turn the hook in the right hand off. Bring the right hand back up. Okay. You're dropping the right hand. Here's off. where Casamayor was able to get the left hand. Boy, used the head again there, but that was literally right on the chin. Corrales is dropping his right hand. He's been hit with a lot of left hands. And we see it again where Casamayor, who's using the jab to help set that up, mind you. And that was a pretty straight punch. That was a, a nice, short, compact left hand that Casamayor was able to get in. And here's where we get the penalty for holding and hitting. Uh, Casamayor getting in with some good shots again, a straight left, going in there. That was pretty blatant. Oh, yeah, that was pretty blatant. And he had been warned once before. So I don't know that you can criticize Tony Weeks for uh, taking the point, especially since he warned him. Well, we've seen a little bit of everything here from Casamayor, almost like in the, in the Asselino Freitas fight, pulling the head down of the opponent, head buddy. Come to me, come to me. You okay? Yeah. You want to continue? Yeah. Okay. Hey, 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 step back. Go back to the phone. Come on. And this time he's hurt. And hey, Casamayor oh, oh. turning the tables on the stop, power stop, hitter. Stop. Diego Corrales looking to end it here in round four. Another straight left hand right on the, on the chin by oh. Casamayor. There's a looping left to the jaw of Corrales. Corrales looking to come back. With an answer. Talk about heart. Casamayor oh, goes down. Cinco, seis, siete, ocho. Bring the back up. Está bien? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Amazing drama here in round four. The left hook of Corrales showed up on time. Just when he needed it.
Casamayor. No, no, no. Still a minute, over a minute left to go in this round, as you point out. So, time for some more fireworks. Morales missing with the left. Yeah, the left hook lands again. That's the difference now. Corrales is throwing that left hook with conviction that he's putting himself in a better position to throw the punch. That's why it's getting in. You can't beat a lefty without a left hook. No one will ever convince me. And that's why Corrales is doing better in this round. Corrales being very brave despite being on the canvas two times, going right in on Casamayor and throwing those left hooks. He is uh, unflappable. And that left hook buckled Casamayor again. Corrales just has to step to his left and keep throwing those hooks and do nothing else. He's doing what Kenny Adams told him to do. And he's got that open stance giving him the ability to throw with either hand. And he does have clout in both. There's, there's a beautiful shot by Casamayor. An open stance that's helping him but hurt him because that's why I got hit with the straight left hand by Casamayor. So the double-edged sword. Wow, what an interesting round. Tremendous round. This is where Casamayor was able to shock Corrales. That was a superb straight left hand. This time, unlike the first knockdown, Corrales was really stunned. First one got him off balance. This one hurt him. He went down and looked like he was in considerable trouble. However, a big left hook would change everything. There goes Casamayor, and for the rest of the round, and this is important in the scoring, Diego Corrales was able to dominate. Boy, there's this fight in the microcosm. He wipes the cut, which is bothering him, then is able to deliver a left hook because Casamayor was just a little hasty in coming in together. Here we go again. Casamayor, the southpaw in the white. Corrales, the conventional fighter in the camouflage. Morales, perhaps underestimating the power of Casamayor. But now Corrales coming on, particularly with his best weapon, the left hook. I asked Casamayor the other day if there's a good left hand straight down the middle by Casamayor. Another left hand, boy, that left hand's finding a hole by Casamayor. the chin of Corrales. Press row scoring. Oh, it's tight. As you would expect. And what complicates the scoring of this fight is we had, in, we had one round, round three, in which there was a point deducted, but there was a knockdown. Then we had two knockdowns in the last round, with one fighter controlling as another fighter controlled the round before, so it's tricky. And Casamayor down for only the second time in his career. The first one questionable with Freitas, and the close controversial decision lost. Oh, what a vicious exchange. Casamayor's camp told us no, no, they no, no, thought no, no, he no, no, could no, hurt Corrales. And he has certainly done that. And much as in the Freitas fight, Casamayor, who we thought might be the boxer, has become the puncher. The uh, prevailing opinion was that for Casamayor to win this fight, he'd have to go to the judges. And for Corrales to win, he'd have to knock Casamayor out. But as mentioned before, Casamayor may have the ability to knock out Corrales here. What a switch. Corrales wanted very much to go downstairs to the oh, body of his father. Has not been able to do it against Casamayor. Uh, and he was hoping that would slow him down. No, 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 no. But he's not no. been able to really make that work. And you know, we mentioned the 12 rounds of boxing for Casamayor in those four matches since he's come back. We said, was that enough? Maybe the answer is no. Not just because of the comp level of competition, because oh, he hasn't oh, stop, been stop. in the ring enough to be sharp. And he is, but has not really been sharp in this fight. Well, we said uh, earlier, 
Question raised because Corrales has fought just 12 rounds. And certainly not the kind of competition that the Casamayor offers since the layoff. And it may be having an effect. This is a huge step up for Corrales. Don't walk to the man. Get your rhythm. Get your rhythm working. Get your rhythm working at the same time. Don't move. I'm telling you, don't move to the left hand. Move to your left. This is your left. Move back this way. Don't move over here. Okay? Come on, baby. Let's go to work. How you feeling? Let's go to work, man. Let's work like it. I'm sorry. Come on. Let's go. I'm sorry about that. No, no, you're broken. But let's go to work. Okay, I'm okay. 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 And look how we saw. You see the welt. Yeah, you just gotta be smart in and out. Yeah, yeah, you gotta be more intelligent. Okay. 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 Remember the Holyfield rock bond fight? It's starting to sort of take on that look a little bit. Time in, let's go. Bump over the eye. Six. They've done a great job of uh, closing the cut, though, around the eye. Of Corrales. Corrales. Yeah, yeah, not Casamayor, but of Corrales. Well, this is really something. Casamayor usually gets off to a really slow start. And perhaps all that conditioning, all that tremendous sparring is paying off. Casamayor in the white trunks. The former WBA 130-pound champion. Looking to get back on top. Corrales in the camouflage, the former IBF champ. And we heard Kenny Adams, uh, who, by the way, of course, was uh, the trainer of uh, one of our Olympic teams and is a terrific trainer, telling Corrales, you've got to step to your left. You're going the wrong way. You have to step to your left so that you can cut him off and then throw that hook. The other thing that Corrales is not doing, and it's the reason he's missing with the hook to the head so much, he's not doubling up. The reason you double your hook against the lefty is it's when you land that left hook to the body, it brings the hand down, then you can throw it to the head. Terrific work rate by Acosta Mayor. He's throwing a lot, very busy. Oh, stop, stop. And of course, the movement is giving Corrales difficulty. The side to side, the lateral. He just never stops moving. <laughs> to me, these are the most interesting fights in boxing where they play out in a way that's somewhat different than the uh, normal thinking would indicate. And that's exactly what this match is doing. It's had a lot of ebbs and flows, and we've seen people doing things that are somewhat uncharacteristic. We've had three knockdowns. Corrales down 26 seconds into round three from a, from a left hand to the chin. Corrales down for the second time, 18-second mark of round four from a, a straight left. And then Casamayor down a minute two into round four. And we've had one point deducted from Casamayor in round three for Rough House Tactics. Beautiful straight left right on the nose. His blood coming for the nose of Corrales. Corrales has not been more than five rounds in these four comeback fights. So he is in unknown territory and he's Ooh, firing the mouth blood coming from the mouth the lip i believe of corrales he is bleeding profusely heavy left hand right on the head by casamayor is having his way you're talking about guts and courage and there's corrales and now it's fighting back now every time casamayor comes in and gets brave the left hook lands because he opens himself up to Corrales. It's fascinating. Tremendous show of resolve by Diego Corrales, who's bleeding profusely from the mouth. Ha! You're going to knock him out. Look at me. Look at me. He's so fucked up right now. Stop it. Stop for a minute. Okay. Hey, Joel. Joel. He's done. 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 He's Strong. 
know how you can tack Mark Rama into one fight. We listen to Corrales. He is not a happy guy. One round. I was there, man. I know you was there. But we had that problem out of That's the only thing. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, Jack. the seeds for a rematch. You would think it would be intriguing. Let's go up to Jim Gray with the doctor. With Margaret Goodman, the doctor. Doctor, why did you stop the fight or what was your recommendation? Well, number one, I, I think that it's possible that Diego could have a broken jaw. Number two, he had two really bad lacerations through his mouth. He was bleeding profusely in his mouth. That makes you in danger of swallowing blood, and you could aspirate. Very dangerous. Affect his breathing. Was it your opinion that the blood could not be stopped in time for this fight to continue? Definitely. Definitely. It was very dangerous to allow that to continue. Have someone, while they're exercising, they're going to breathe in that blood. Very dangerous for him to continue. How much is taken into account a fighter wanting to continue, or is that not in involved at all in a medical decision? You know, that's very important, and a fighter of his caliber, of course, is very important to me, but obviously the most important is his health, and I can't allow him to have a problem with his breathing. An ultimate danger. Final thought. An easy call or a tough call, this one? Oh, a tough call. He's a great fighter, a great champion. It's certainly nothing I wanted to do. Doctor, thank you. Thank you. All right, Steve, we'll be back with the fighters in a moment. Down to you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, despite the reaction by Diego Corrales, that is about as good as it gets for a ring doctor. She nailed it. Dr. Margaret Goodman. All right, let's get it up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout has been stopped at the end of round number six. Upon advice of our ringside physician, Dr. Margaret Goodman, our referee in charge, Tony Weeks, stops the contest. Chico Corrales suffering from two severe lacerations in the mouth. The winner by way of technical knockout, and he is now the IBA champion, Joel El Cepillo. The stoppage, of course, is done by the referee, Tony Weeks, on the suggestion of the uh, ringside doctor, but okay, come on. how could you even doubt Dr. Dr. Margaret Goodman in that scenario? Let us get it back to uh, Jim Gray of the ring. Jim. All right. Thank you very much. Diego, first of all, how are you? How's your lip and, and, and so forth, your, your injuries? Hey, you know, I'm, I'm a fighter, man. That's what I'm here to do. With it. This is part of the job. You know, hey, what the hell? You wanted to continue, obviously, but looking at you and, and Dr. Goodman obviously has your best interest at heart. Can you understand the reason to stop the fight? Not at all. Not at all, because I had him hurt. I, w I, might, I probably would have finished him off this round. Uh, I mean, he was hurt real bad. I hurt him all, all through the fight. So I was, I was definitely still in the fight. A little blood, a little cut. Hey, I'm, I'm not going to die from this. Well, her concern is that the blood go down into your throat and into your mouth and you'd have a problem breathing. Let's take a look at the shot here on the jaw in the last round and tell us, Diego, from your perspective. Well, what happened was, right when it, when it, as soon as he hit me, the mouthpiece went through my lip and I, I knew it instantly. As soon as he hit, he did it, bang. I just, a gob of blood just gushed right, right out of my mouth, yeah. I mean, it, the mouthpiece split and I don't know if it was a, uh, I had my lip underneath the mouthpiece, or how I did it, uh, the mouthpiece went through. Hey, hey that's a good cut of my eye, too. That's some, Tell, good, some good, uh, uh, some nice marks there. You'll have those for, for a while to look at. In the fourth round, you went down first. You were able to somehow gather yourself, 
come back and knock him down. Tell us about the fourth round and how you were able to recover and, and get back into this fight. You know, I, I'm, just, I'm just an animal, man. I'm, I, I refuse <laughs> to, I'm gonna tell you, I'm just the tr bottom truth. I don't think there are as many people that are scrappy, as gutty, and willing to go through the kind of stuff I'm willing to go through. Uh, pain is, 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 I'm in the pain business. So I was willing to go through all that. Uh, this was, this was my show, my time. I, I was ready to fight this fight. I really, I really felt that if they let me continue, I would have stopped him. I really do feel that way, and, and, and I just. So you'd like how, to fight him again? Absolutely. I mean, well, how could you, heard how could you round. stop this fight? Why not let this fight go on? Hey, if I'm gutting it out, he's gutting it out. We're both gutting it out. Who gives a, you know? Who cares? That's what the sport needs. All right, let's hear from Joel Casamayor. Luis de Cuba will translate for us. Good fight, good fight. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. You're a great okay. fighter, Diego. All right, all right. All right. All right. Yeah. Luis, yeah. Joel, yeah. did you think that this fight should be stopped because of his injury? Bueno, yo creo que esta pelea, para mí, yo la gané de arreglar ese nocao y... Esta pelea había que pararla ya. De que de perder el palo había que pararla. Pues yo, yo, yo sentía débil a él. He says, yeah, he was, he, was, he was starting to hurt him now. Every time he hurt him, he was hurting him. You know, every time he hit him, he was hurting him. So he thought that if he didn't get him now, he would get him later on. It would be no problem. You have a welt on your head. Uh, it's It's been growing. It's gone down somewhat. But it, were you ever concerned about that? And was the corner? ¿Tuviste alguna vez? ¿Sentiste mal algún algún golpe? No, me lo golpe que me dio se fue que me 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 quedé para parado frente a él, pero me dio, pero sé que yo tengo una queja y me paré, pero cuando estuve aquí no estaba normal. He says the only time you know he when I stood in front of him, you know he he hit me, but when I boxed him, gave him angles to angles, he didn't know what to do, and I was hurting him every time he was coming in. You knocked him down in the fourth round. You had seemingly at that point were in total control, Joel, and then he came back and hit you with a wild punch and put himself back into the fight. Did you get careless, and why weren't you able to put him away? Dice que tú lo te, que lo pus, lo tumbaste a él y después te dio un golpe a ti bueno a ti donde tú sabes te, si si perdiste la concentración cuando te dio el golpe. No 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 perdí la, la, la concentración pero lo lo me sentí como el hongo porque era pero ya cuando caí en el piso el rápido cuando te iba por cuatro me me recuperé rápido estaba bien. No I was in great shape I recuperated right away you know and 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 I knew that if I boxed him the knockout would come you know I shouldn't have traded with the guy I knew that the game plan was to box him the first five six rounds and then from there we start picking him apart. In English, will you give him a rematch? Tú le das una revancha a él. No, ahorita yo voy a no no voy a tomar caso si quiere una revancha, que una revancha. No, 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 no. no, no, no. We're not, listen, listen. Right now we don't need like Freitas has been running from us. We don't even need Freitas anymore. We showed the whole world we're the best 130 pound in the world. Now hey, Morales is talking. Now Freitas needs us. Okay? That's what I wanted. That's the reason we took the fight against the most dangerous guy at 130 pounds. You really you really think that Freitas needs you now? Don't you? Want to fight him again, and isn't this a little bit of bravado coming out? No, we want to fight him. We'll take him, but we want to fight him. Let, let the fighter. Let's let the fighter answer. Thank you. Luis. No, a mí ahorita no me interesa. No, a mí no me interesa hablar con él. Él, 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 yo ahorita soy garantito. Me siento como soy uno de los tres de los primeros peleas libres. Quiero pelear con Morales, Barrera. A mí ahorita no me interesa a mí. He says, you know, he's one of the best head fighters pound for pound in the world right now. That's the reason we took the Corrales fight. You know, Freitas hasn't been fighting anybody. You know, hey, well. Now we can give him the opportunity because the fans know we're the best 130 pounder in the world, pound for pound. Congratulations, it was Thank a great fight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Back down to you, Steve. Jim, perhaps poetic justice for Joel Casmayor after he thought he was robbed in the loss to Oslino Freitas. Now it's Diego Corrales who feels slighted after the uh, controversial stoppage after round number six. Joel Casmayor unlike any other performance we've seen in uh, in top fights, was able to put together not only his boxing skills, but also power. There is the power coming from Joel Casamayor in round three. In round four, he continued to show power with the straight left hand, and Corral is supposed to be the puncher, did here get the left hook in. When Casamayor had him hurt, he would come in and square himself up more, and that would make the left hook available to, Casami to uh, Corrales. This man put it together better in this performance in many ways than ever before. Yeah, uh -huh. A fight of major significance in boxing's junior lightweight division. The former WBA titleist Joel Casamayor prevails over former IBF champ Diego Corrales. As you check the judges' scorecards at the time of the stoppage, all three had it in favor of Joel Casamayor. Four points, two points, and three points.